Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus. I'm glad you're joining us. And most importantly, I'm glad that Jesus is Lord. He's still on the throne. Uh, glory to God. I've got a great word for you today because I know these are difficult, perilous times. But God always has a now word, a word in season that's meant to minister and bring you to a place of breakthrough and victory. God wants you to gain a far surpassing victory. And I want to share some things with you today that I pray will bless it and not just encourage and inspire you, but bring change in you, bring life in you, bring hope in you, because I want you to come to a living hope in Him. Now, let me share some stuff with you as I start, because, you know, people uh, recognize, experts recognize in this difficult, perilous time that people are getting discouraged, depressed, and it's not good. They recognize, and it's a scientific fact, that with every 1% increase in unemployment, the death rate increases by 6%, in part through suicide, through sicknesses not being diagnosed, etc. It's a negative time period. And so they even now realize that lockdowns are not the answer, and they don't really know what to do. And they're trying to bring forth you know, how to encourage people so they don't get depressed and discouraged, and so the thing's running on TV suggestions to do this and do that to help keep you uh, positive in this negative time because we live in perilous times but I want you to understand something that what God is calling what God is providing is not just to keep you positive it's life it brings change some people say well you're foolish well glory to God maybe I am but look at this Christianity is foolishness how could God change the world taking somebody a man and putting him in the middle of nowhere when jesus came he was a nobody and a nothing he didn't come as a king he didn't come as some uh, great famous person he came in as a nobody and he walked this earth as a man i love what um watchman Nee said now listen to this there came a time when god committed himself to human form and the person of jesus of nazareth before the word became flesh god fullness knew no bounds once the incarnate became a reality, God's work and God's power were limited to the channel of his flesh. The question then was this, will this man, Jesus Christ, restrict or manifest God? We are shown from the Bible that far from limiting God, he has incredibly manifested God's fullness. The rich fullness of God was channeled without restriction through his flesh. His flesh contained the unrestricted fullness of God's life and power. That in this absolute place of weakness, God demonstrated his strength. The devil must have rejoiced, recognizing the Lord God had come in this place, which was a wilderness to God. Considered heaven, that home, how perfect it was that God came on this fallen earth and he restricted himself to the form of a human flesh, which is weak, which can be killed. The devil looked at it and he th saw and thought, you know, I can defeat him now. He's in a realm where I can gain the victory. And the devil's looking at, I, he sees in a wilderness. When you come into the wilderness, there's a place where he recognizes that he can gain the victory. And he's going to try everything to defeat and destroy you. But what you've got to lay hold of is the wonder of the Lord our God. That in this place of weakness, his strength is perfected and demonstrated. And God is able to do something and bring about a victory as far as surpassing. Jesus gained in fail, frail human flesh the victory of all eternity. He overcame the enemy, utterly defeated him. You then look, how could a man in the middle of nowhere come and overcome and his life story change the world and be known throughout? It doesn't make sense from a human natural perspective. The enemy, the devil must have looked and felt all odds were in his favor. He had won, the election was sure but he didn't recognize or understand what God was doing. Then Jesus chooses 12 uneducated men, tells them, go preach this gospel. The devil sat, must have been gloriously rejoicing, thinking, how foolish I have defeated him. But he could not understand what God was doing. On the day of Pentecost, in that upper room, only 120 of the 500 turned up. Oh, the devil must have rejoiced, thinking, I have it, even in this glorious moment, I have it. 
But then the Spirit of God was poured out and everything changed. The Holy Spirit not just poured in Jesus, in one man, but now poured out. And you suddenly see a church born filled with the Holy Spirit and fire and power. People sent forth not based on their education, their qualifications, but filled with the Holy Spirit. Something that the devil could not overcome because he can defeat you in the area of your education, your flesh. But when we learn to walk in the fire of the Holy Spirit, there is no circumstance that you cannot overcome and gain a far surpassing victory. God took these men and women filled with the Holy Spirit, nothings and nobodies in the middle of nowhere, and they changed history forever. There's nowhere you cannot go without hearing of the testimony and hearing of the impact that they made, how quickly they turned the world upside down, despite the severest of persecution, how they were killed and slaughtered, but you couldn't defeat them. Their blood became seed that multiplied and increased, that people were willing to give all to become a Christian because of the Holy Spirit, what they saw, what it did in frail human flesh. So I got a word for you. I got a word for you that in the midst of a perilous, difficult wilderness, that you can gain such a far surpassing victory. Jesus, led by the Spirit into the wilderness, went in as an ordinary man, even though he was perfect God. He had worked no miracle up to them. Now baptized in the Holy Spirit, he goes into the wilderness, is tested, tried, and approved of heaven, comes out in the power of the Holy Spirit, and now the power is seen. God demonstrated his great glorious name through this man, Jesus. And we are here today to magnify, manifest Jesus through these human vessels. In the most difficult circumstance, God showing and demonstrating his mighty power. But we've got to understand, we've got to get our eyes off of us. So I want to share something with you today that I pray will bless and encourage you and cause a fire in your bones as you recognize the Holy Spirit and the power of His ministry in your life and what He can and will do if you allow Him. I want you to turn to Psalm uh, 16. I, I started to share this during the week, and God has really been ministering to me, changing me working on me. See, this season has been a great season where God has been working on me. A lot of it, I am sharing with you the testimony of what God has been breaking and doing in me. In Psalm 16, it says this, Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, You are my God. I have no good besides you. And I want to just stop there. You know, there has to be a recognizing that you need Him. And the wilderness should bring you to such a place of desperation and an awareness that you absolutely need Him. Because as long as life is good, we get so caught up that we walk half in heaven, or half in His will, and half walking in the Lord, and half walking in the world. And we're comfortable and happy. But we don't recognize death is on the way and the seeds that we're sowing and we're not accomplishing the divine purpose of heaven. You're not called to walk half in the world. You know, we're not called to have the love of the world in us. Do you know, I'm not against people enjoying life, having good things, but it's sad when the church is more focused on having the best cars, the best houses, and biggest this, we're passing through. And it bothers me that sometimes that money which could be invested in the gospel is invested in things that perish because we've lost sight of who we are. And we've not got to the place, preserve me, O oh God, where God, I hunger and thirst for you. I want to, as we look at this, I'm going to bring in the temptations because the temptations that Jesus went through were at the end, before he was launched, released, came out of the wilderness and the power of the Holy Spirit and went into the purpose of heaven. And that's where many of you are at, where God wants to bring you out into the purpose of heaven with a fire. He wants to release you and do something. 
And many of us want to walk with spiritual authority. We want to be able to pray effectively and see results. We want to be able to cast out devils and we want to be able to do things, see the sick healed and walk with such an authority. And God said, okay, that you've got to go through the wilderness and you've got to learn the lessons, be tried, tested and approved of heaven. You need to learn how to walk and get the heaven mindset so that you're not walking in your ability and your strengths, but you're walking in the strength of heaven, boasting in your weaknesses, recognizing that you cannot do it. But glory to God, He can. And that's the miracle of Christianity. That's the power of Christianity. As we make known the glorious name of Jesus. And I want to start here. Uh, chapter 4 of Matthew. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. How could God lead you into the wilderness? But yet He did. He led Jesus into the wilderness. I don't want to go into these places, but you've got to recognize that God is leading you because God is with you. God wants to demonstrate and show some things to you in the most difficult, hard places that you can have a far surpassing victory. That's where it has to be seen. This is where you've come to know your God. This is where you get a revelation of His mercy and great goodness towards you. Stay with me because I know some of you are not convinced yet, but stay with me. And it's a woman who's been tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Well, I don't know about you. I don't have to fast 40 nights and 40 days to become hungry. I mean, one hour goes by and I'm hungry. Glory to God. But Jesus, we cannot imagine the hunger that all of a sudden has come on him. Where the awareness, he was tempted always like us. So he's experiencing the fullness of that hunger and of that need of the flesh man. And the devil turns up knowing this because see, the devil always wants to turn up. And I want to assure you, as you are on the verge of going into your breakthrough, the devil turns up because he wants to steal the purpose of God. He wants to so taint it and change it because he is terrified that if you will dare believe God, you will step forward in the power of the Lord God and do him damage. He's got to stop you. And so he's got to get what? In the area of your weakness. His attack is always in the area of your weakness. He's not going to go after your strengths, but he's going to go after your weaknesses. So look at this. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now, the context of you think about that, you need bread. You're the Son of God. You need to live. You need to fulfill your purpose. You're dying. You're hungry. Surely that's not God's will for you. Surely all you've got to do is speak because your words are creative. They're powerful. He's trying one way to honor him and one way to play a game with him. See, the devil comes so craftily. He comes cunningly. He comes to so play a game with you. And he comes based on your need. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to read what it says in Psalm 16. And as for the saints who are in earth, they are the majestic ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I shall not pour out their drink offerings of blood, nor will I take their names upon my lips. Now, I want you to see something here. That David understood that when the pressure's on, when that pressure is so on you to the place of breaking, and you have a need you need to take care of this body. There's situations I'm going through. It is so unbearable. There comes a breaking point. And you either break onto the Lord or you break onto the enemy. And there will be a breaking point. And you cannot do it in of yourself, but you're going to have to go after the Lord God. That is the point the devil turns up at the breaking point. And he wants to come. Because that's why the world made their gods. Because they come to the breaking point and they cannot do it. And in superstition, other things, in desperation, hoping that maybe they try this or they try that. Try that. You know, we think about foolishness. We think of baseball teams and sporting teams that have these superstitions. They have to wear the same underwear for five days in a row. Because if they don't, they'll lose the game. 
and they think Christianity is foolishness and they don't recognize the authority and the power and the glory of it because they don't have an understanding. If you get your eyes open by the Holy Spirit and you see something and you're brought into such a rich relationship with the Lord God that in the midst of the most difficult dark seasons you can cry out, preserve me, O Lord, and there's a God who sees, who hears, and answers. And there's a Holy Spirit that's present with you and that, that greatest need. Now listen to what Jesus said. Because you can either turn and bow and barter. But I tell you this, that that's, that short-term gain causes long-term pain. We will surrender to get rid of the pain, to get rid of the pressure. And what we get back, because you've got an enemy that hates you intensely, who wants to destroy you. He's not looking to cut a peace, peace deal with you to hopefully get you to stop. He wants to trick you so he can destroy you. He hates you. So Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He went back and quote the very thing that God spoke. Pre-incarnate Lord Jesus spoke to the children of Israel regarding the testing in the wilderness. He went and fired right back. All the things the enemy had tried to do to derail the purpose of God, he took hold of the words of life. And he spoke life. It is written. And we should have within us the fire of revelation of the word. So when the devil comes, no, it is written. And there is such an understanding. It's a knife and a sword. And there's an authority to it. We don't just speak because I have a head knowledge, but I have a revelation knowledge. And you cannot comprehend that except by the Holy Spirit. It's foolishness. Same as taking somebody in the middle of nowhere, taking 12 nobodies and turning the world upside down. It's foolishness. But God takes our weaknesses and demonstrates His glory and His power. God put His magnificent power in frail human vessels, 1st, 2nd Corinthians chapter 4. That in this vessel, God has shone His light into darkness, and it shines through us, frail human vessels. But the world needs to see that, because that's the real power of the gospel, that it is not in those that are perfect, but the imperfect. We don't need the Holy Spirit because I'm perfect. I need the Holy Spirit because I'm imperfect. I need the one that can change me. Life is too big for me. Life is too great for me. But the Holy Spirit is bigger and greater. And I want you to have such a relationship, a living hope in Him, that no matter what you face, you have a confidence because of His name. Um, we're going back to various parts of this, but I'm going to read on. The Lord, and this is Psalm 16. The Lord is my portion, uh, my inheritance, my cup. You support my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. I will bless the Lord who counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is, he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. He has counseled me. In the dark hours, He counseled me. He led me. And I've kept the Lord ever before me. I've focused my eyes on Jesus. In this wilderness, God, you have not forsaken me. You are with me. And I want you to become so conscious of His presence. And by, you can only do this by the Holy Spirit. In the secret place, by sowing into the Spirit and spending time with Him and allowing Him to open His Word, which is I've been trying to share with you, so that you know His presence and His counsel. And now you have an inner witness, bearing witness. You have an unction, an anointing from the Holy Spirit. And you don't need people to tell you to do this or that, but the Holy Spirit, they're present, teaching you, guiding you, leading you. You know. And so your everything comes out of God. My life is not dependent on these physical needs being met. Your life, your joy, your satisfaction is not based upon getting out of the wilderness, your breakthrough. Your satisfaction, your joy is based upon your relationship with the living God and your hearing Him. Hearing from heaven. And I use the word hearing because we need to have active listening towards heaven. You need to have a real relationship where you hear His voice and you know and that your life is that dependent on that relationship. And many of us, the reason we end up in a wilderness is because we got out of alignment with heaven. We got so focused on the wrong things and God is trying to bring you back. 
so that he can send you forward. God has a purpose for you and he wants to release you into it. And a lot of time he's got to bring us back to send us forward. Now, he counsels you. So in the midst of it, he gives you the words to say, the actions to do. He will lead you. He will give you wisdom. Remember James said this, that in the midst of all trials, we're counted all joy. But if anyone lacks wisdom, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to respond. There is an abundance of wisdom given, provided to you, that you can walk in this dark season with wisdom. Now let me continue, because all of a sudden the devil recognizes. He has used the word. I'm going to twist now and use the word against him. And the devil loves to turn and twist. And so we continue now in Matthew 5, sorry, 4, in verse 5, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on, the other, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. It is written. He takes the word. And the enemy loves to come up with a counterfeit. Maybe you've been standing for a job and he brings up the counterfeit and says to you, look at this glorious opportunity to walk by faith. Doesn't it, doesn't it say this? Doesn't it say that? And it all sounds good. But look at the response of Jesus. Jesus said, said to him, on the other hand, it is written. And you need to have the Holy Ghost in you counseling you say, no, on the other hand. You need to hear what heaven says, no, on the other hand. Because many people get led astray with all these crazy ideas that sound good, that look like they align with the word, but we miss on the other hand. Because it's not about doing good things, it's about doing the good things that heaven wants you to do right now. I don't want you busy doing things. They haven't said, oh, Rambati Siki, Sakare Keto, Sandakare Kisuko. Heaven does not want you busy doing things, but heaven wants you doing the will of the Lord. There is a strict, complete difference because getting busy doing things can distract, can prevent you from doing the purpose of heaven, and they become seed sown to your flesh and will bring destruction, where God wants you to be doing the things of heaven because that is seed sown that brings life. Because everything that is born of God overcomes the world, and God wants you to do something born of God. God wants to reveal, do this, because that is born of God, that comes from the very heart of God, and it is an overcoming authority in it. It has a breakthrough authority in it. So in this season, I want you to get a hold of God. What should I be doing now? Because if you do what God has called you to do, what it has within it, overcoming power, because it's born of God. It produces something. But there is a danger because particularly as you come to that verge moment where you're about to enter your breakthrough, where the devil is going to play games and try to get you off on a tangent doing something that looks good, but it's not the will of heaven. He can get you doing even ministry stuff, this stuff or that stuff, that sound spiritual. May even have good fruit to it up front, but is it the will and purpose of heaven now? And you have an unction. Something on the inside of you says, but. Something on the inside of you is not at peace. It's disturbed. And I'm not talking about a disturbance that comes through the manipulation of men. I'm talking about a disturbance in your spirit, man. If you have built a sensitivity, which you should in the wilderness, because you become more tuned. The noise of the world is gone. So many distractions are gone. It's about you in heaven right now. The wilderness is a glorious place to get so many things ripped and stripped from our lives. So it comes down to the bare essentials where your survival is hearing from heaven. And so now your ears become so acutely attuned. Your eyes can see so much better now. And you, can, you have a heart that hears from heaven. And you should know there should be stirring in you, but... It is written. And usually something, I, I just, you know it, I'm not sure. I put this on the shelf, I'm going to pray about it. You know, we've got to get past the place where we say we're going to pray about it. And that's as far as it goes. There's got to be a point where we get on our knees and we pray about it. Where we do seek the Lord and we cry out, God, what is your will? What is your thought? What, what are you saying? Now, 
sometimes I don't get an immediate answer, but I just keep pressing on. I come back and I'm standing, Lord. I give myself places, opportunities for God to speak. I love that, to create opportunities for God to speak to you. And it's still small voice, because I love the still small voice, because that means he's this close. He's so close he can whisper and I hear it. But you've got to create opportunities. Get into a place of worship. Get into a place of just waiting. Get into a place of just lifting up, magnifying, honoring His name. Not raising up God if you don't. If you don't do this, I'm going under. We spent all of our time there. Going back to the psalm, it says, Your saints are my delight. That my focus no longer on me, but on your people. I don't know how many more hours I've now learned to spend on my knees crying out. And I love to walk when I pray. And I'll walk around in circles. I'll walk this way and I'll walk that way. And I'm praying. And I'm raising up saints and I'm standing to get God for mercy for them, for the breakthrough for them. And I'm standing to get when I'm consumed crying out for the brethren because they are my delight. Because they're the daddy God's delight. And the closer I get to him, I see what's on his heart. And I see in this hour how he's broken for a church that should be walking with fire. He wants to revive a church. He wants to stir and provoke his church because we're meant to be salt and light in this hour. We need revival. We need an awakening. And it starts in the church. And it starts with each one of us individually going after the Lord. And right now you have an opportunity because your life is not dependent upon these needs being met. It's upon your relationship with the Lord. Hearing from heaven that you get revived that you get the spark, you get the fire of heaven back in your bones. And now you carry that fire. And every believer you meet, that fire just spreads. It's a wild fire of heaven that just spreads. And the, the unbeliever sees it and is challenged because they're going through the same things and they don't know how to overcome. And they're trying all their superstitions and desperation. But you're not standing with a superstition, but with a confidence of faith in the name of the Lord your God. There should be such a confidence in you, such a calmness and a joy. I want to go on here, and this, this is Psalm 16. And it goes on, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. Is your heart glad? If not, the care is on you. If you're not walking, let me continue on here. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell securely. For you have not abandoned my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You will make known to me the path of life, in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures ever forever. There's a different, I am in your presence. Oh, glory to God, I want you to so recognize and enjoy His presence. I want you to take time and get off of the cares of life to so cast them and take time enjoying His presence. Time stand before Him in worship of Him, truly worshiping Him, not just singing a worship song. Not just sing a nice song that blesses you, inspires you. It's got to be real where, God, I'm worshiping you. God, I'm blessing you. God, I'm just enjoying and loving your presence, God. I'm in your presence. I become so conscious of your presence that you are so real to me. You are my living hope. You are my everything. And there's a gladness that comes in you. There's a confidence that comes in you. There's an unshakableness that comes in you. And though everything else was shake, I am now confident. I am at peace because of my God in His presence. You cannot help this thing because in His presence is fullness of joy. That joy should be contagious. That joy should infuse you. That every part of your being now should be so filled with it. But my situations haven't changed. So, but I'm still going under. Then you've lost it. You've lost sight of what's really happening because the breakthrough has to occur in the spiritual. Listen, you go to the Last Supper, or sorry, let's just go to the Passover. The children of Israel could not even fully understand as they celebrated that meal. It was their victory meal. We celebrate victory after the fact, not before. But they were celebrating the meal and they didn't realize in the spiritual realm everything had happened that day. The breakthrough had happened that day. Jesus shares the Last Supper and says this is. The breakthrough happened right there. 
Do this in remembrance of me. This is your breakthrough. This is the celebration that you are to always remember, that you celebrate because the breakthrough occurs in the spiritual realm and then it manifests in the natural. Uh, we've been so waiting for the natural manifestation that we've lost sight of sowing the seed in the spiritual realm and getting the breakthrough in the spiritual because God wants to do something bigger, greater. That's how he birthed the church. That's how a group of unknowns, nobody's turned the world upside down. That's how they could carry an authority and power. And the historians would write of these people that they carried something, that they would face death untouched, unmoot, that they carried an authority and prayed over the sick and they were healed. These people, they were not like anybody else. And it and everybody looked at them and they couldn't understand them. And so they persecuted them and they attacked them because the devil hated them. And the devil hates you. But glory to God, God so loves you. And there's a place where you can come and God preserve me. And that's how you enter in. And you spend this time in his presence and you enjoy his presence. And you spend time because you love him. And then you're so moved, God, what is on your heart? And you begin to pray for the brethren. You begin to pray because that's what's on daddy God's heart. Not no longer concerned with the care that your heart is so heavy weighed down with your situation, but you are free. You are free in the midst of it, though nothing has changed. You are free, set wholly, completely free today. You can walk in this liberty today. And many people, the reason they have not entered in right now is either one, the timing of heaven, or two, we're hindering heaven. And I don't want to hinder heaven. I want the timing of heaven because God has a perfect time. And at the set time, he moves. And at the set time, he opens door. I have learned that God shuts doors. When he shuts doors, they're immediate. But when he opens doors, the word opening there is a slower process so often. They're not immediate doors. Sometimes they open slower. And as we learn from Deuteronomy 7, 22, that he gives us the land what? bit by bit. I want the whole thing, but you've got to learn how to walk with spiritual authority. Otherwise, you'll be overwhelmed by your enemy. And God wants to bring you and develop you and, and to share with you so that you walk with an authority and that you are able to carry the proper authority to, at the level God is at you that you're at. Now, if I continue on, so the devil wasn't done yet. And again, the devil took him, verse 8, to the very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, their, their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve. The last one was to steal the call. The last one was what's most important to the enemy. That call. He hates you. The more he hates the call in you. That call threatens him. That call scares him because if you step up and if you will fulfill the call, it's not about you just getting your needs met. You are now walking as a believer with fire from heaven, turning the world upside down. See, we've lost sight of who we are. You're a person passing through, preaching this glorious gospel, a witness. Not here to live life but here to live the life, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and power, walking through, just passing through. As you pass through, you are salt and light. You are making known this glorious gospel with the power of the Holy Spirit. Him and you together in partnership, turning the world upside down, bringing change. You press forward the kingdom of heaven, advance the kingdom, and you are taking down the, the domain of darkness. Changing. Lives being set free, and the devil hates it. Souls rescued from hell. And that's what it's about. And God wants to get us to see the true purpose, and the devil recognizes it. And so the devil came after God to stop, but he will present to you, I will give this to you, because I know, bottom line, this is what it's about. But now, if we bow to that, he's in control. And you've got to recognize your inheritance, Psalm 16, is in pleasant places. God has got a good inheritance for you. You may look, listen, stop looking to the natural and start looking to the spiritual. Start seeing through the eyes of heaven. And that even though I look around and it's not a good place, my lines, my lot 
is in pleasant places. I've not entered in yet. And if I hold fast with the confidence God's about to turn this thing around to something bigger, something with so much glory to God that brings so much satisfaction and joy that God wants to do something beyond you like He did with the disciples, like He did with the early church, and that you impact this generation. You gain a crown. Very soon we will stand before Jesus and He's going to come and we are going to be able to worship Him taking the crowns that we've earned and lay them at His feet. I don't want to stand there empty-handed. I don't want to stand there with an excuse but say, well, I survived. We're so focused on survival that we lose sight that you're to lay down your life and trust and absolute confidence that He will preserve you that He is a good Father who cares for you, and that as you stand trusting in Him and His name. See, I want to spend, I'm going to do a whole thing, I think, on the name, to really get this, to, to bring such a revelation, because it's about His name. It's about His name. God honors His name. His name is on the line. And if you will trust in His name, His name is good, not in your ability, and your real need is this. Go after this, because the next verse in Matthew chapter 4, 11, then the devil left him. And see, there comes a moment where it's over. There comes a moment where the victory is won in the spiritual, and you'll know it. And it says, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. And all of a sudden, there's angels loosed on assignment to bring about the purpose of heaven. This is the place you've been trying to get to. This is the place you've been trying to go after. And many of you are on the verge. And there's this testing and trying. And God is saying, listen, my Holy Spirit will counsel you. My Holy Spirit will take you through to give you the far surpassing victory. But you've got this season, the wilderness was a season to get in the Word. So that when the enemy comes, you can say it is written with revelation with a fire in your bone, with a true understanding that you understand that you know that you know. You are fully persuaded by the Word through the Holy Spirit in the secret place. This Word has become something greater in you. I really pray that you gain such an appetite to pray more and to get into the Word. And that as the Holy Spirit opens your eye, you get a revelation of this relationship, not dead religious praying, repetitive praying in a superstitious way and a hope, but a living relationship with the Lord God, where there is a hearing and there's an answering, that you stand on the Word and God speaks to you through the Word, and He begins to open and you see it, and you hear things and you get an understanding what's really going on and what's at stake and you get a revelation that God wants to do something bigger hold fast and you get a realization that God I'm at the breaking point so just hold on this is not the time to quit this is not the time to pull back but this is the time to keep standing trusting having done all stand but I'm weary Lord then rest in me but keep standing Trust in me. Come and receive your strength from me in the Word through worship. Many of you just need to get back into the place of worship because we, get dis we lose strength and because we get discouraged by the weight of it. Well, then get back into worship. Begin to glorify, magnify the name. Get your whole being on the name. Because, listen, remember what it said here. You are the Lord. I have no good besides you. Anything good in me is Him. I bring nothing to the table that's good of me. It's Him. And that is forged in the fire of His presence. Oh, glory to God. God wants, you know, the, the world may have rejected you, but He's accepted you. And God wants to now use you to touch lives more than you'll ever imagine. God wants to use you in such a powerful way. And it may be through simple things. I don't know what your call is. But to walk in the authority of the call, you've got to go through the wilderness. And you've got to get the seal from heaven, which comes on those that are broken, those that have surrendered, those that have yielded, those who have come to know the Lord their God, who have made Him their refuge, that recognize, I have no good beside you.
that all the time where I have boasted in me, all the time that you need me, you need this, you need that, and all the things that I thought I had, all my skill sets mean nothing before the Lord. But tempered under his hands, they bring him glory. Yielded to him, his spirit, they magnify, manifest him. Hallelujah. I pray you're receiving something because God, I know that many of you are on the verge. I hear the Spirit saying, on the verge, and God is trying to take you into the promised land, but there is a testing, and you've got to overcome, and this time, don't let the enemy steal. Don't walk in fear of him because the Holy Spirit's with you. I don't know what to say. You don't have to know. The Holy Spirit will guide you. You make a stand on the Word, and when you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Get into prayer, and get back in, and just get back into the Word. Get in the word. Get off a critical tongue. Stop. We've got to stop with the critical, judgmental tongue. We've got to start guarding our mouth, what we say, and what we, you know, just be careful what you say and what you don't say. It'd be better sometimes not to say anything than to say some of the unbelief and er criticalness, the judgmentalness that comes out of our tongue. That we sow such horrible seed and we have to cry out for a, a void of harvest. Well, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to produce something that's good. I want my inheritance, my lot to be in pleasant places that produce something that is good. Amen. I pray you're good. I just I pray this this message is ministering to you, that is touching you, that is just really getting down into your heart and bring you to a living hope in Jesus, that your attention is going back to Jesus and that there's a fire sparked in you that God, I just want to spend time with you. If I could get you that place that, God, I just want to love in your presence. I just want to spend time and enjoy you and really worship you and really hear the word and really know you. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I recognize you in my life. I just receive your ministry and I yield to you, Holy Spirit. Come and just breathe on me afresh. Come, Holy Spirit. I thank you where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Come and breathe liberty on my whole being. Release every heaviness, every weight right now for every person, Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the demonstration of power because you watch over the Word to perform it. Now let there be power in their lives, that there be such a touch from heaven in their lives. This day of breaking, this day, Father God, just a releasing in their lives that they would know that they would know that they would know, and there would be a standing with a confidence. For those that don't know you, Father God, would you open their eyes to see? Would you open their ears to hear? Holy Spirit, would you just speak to them? Reveal Jesus to them in such a wonderful way. Show them the kindness of the Savior. In the midst of the storm of difficult seasons, show them how you love them, how much God cares that He went through everything. He was tempted in all ways so that He is sympathetic, understands, and wants to be there to strengthen us and lead us through to the place of victory that you are so good, and let your name be glorified, Jesus, and let them see the wonder and goodness of your name, of the authority and the power of your name, that they don't have to come in superstition, they don't have to come and try to earn, but simply come and receive by grace through faith what you are so richly, freely providing and giving because you are such a good father. But you want to bring correction of all the things in our lives that have caused us hurt and harm, that have caused, because we don't recognize sin, and that the wages of sin are death, but that we, Father God, would have our eyes open today to see, to see what is sin, to see what is falling short of your glory, and that by the Holy Spirit to lay that aside and be changed and transformed, Father God, to be transformed into your image, Jesus, to be like you, to sound like you, to walk like you, to make you known, Jesus. Oh, Father, I give you glory, that if you can use a nobody in the middle of nowhere, like Peter, like James, like John, nobody's flawed vessels you can use this vessel and it starts in the fire of your presence so i come and in this place i yield and in the fire i yield and cry out to you and i say god preserve me my hope is in you there's no good in me besides you i lift you up i worship you i just bless your name and i thank you jesus you are lord amen well I thank you for listening i'm watching i pray that you would join one of our Zoom meetings and just be refreshed. Join our partner page. And uh, if you get on Facebook, join there. It's a great place. And if you've got prayer requests, you can post them. And you can have brothers and sisters standing with you praying. You get some fresh manna. You can get just encouragement in Jesus. Know that you are not alone. Amen. Well, know that we're praying for you. I thank you for your prayers. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Hallelujah.